In today's video, we're taking a look at the 10 best Apple M1 crossover compatible games. You can get 15% off crossover when using my coupon code MrMacRite, link in the description. All games here have been extensively tested on crossover via Steam. I can't confirm if other platforms such as the Epic Games Store, Origin, GOG and so on will work. Follow a video tutorial in the description on how to install Steam games on Crossover. Number 10 we have Shadow Warrior 2. Based on my testing, there are not many AAA FPS games that actually work on Crossover. If they do, they are either super super old, below 2010, or have massive game breaking bugs, or can't get anywhere near 30 FPS at a reasonable resolution and graphics preset. I'm therefore super surprised that Shadow Warrior 2 works here. Sure, it's a 2016 title, but it's still an excellent shooter with intense combat and it looks gorgeous still in 2022. Weirdly, the performance between each M1 config is not that much different via crossover, but in my opinion, it's by all means playable as it's similar to what you'd see on the PS4 or Xbox One version. The only thing to note, if you have a baseline M1 chip, make sure to put vertical synchronization to on half rate. This will lock the FPS to 30 and will eliminate most of the big FPS drops and noticeable screen tearing. Number 9 is Wreckfest. Wreckfest is a demolition derby themed racing game with soft body damage modeling, sophisticated driving dynamics, and an in-depth vehicle upgrading featuring both demolition derbies and more traditional track races. It performs pretty well on M1 based Max, but you will have to configure the game settings to what you see on screen for the best performance. I really think if this game came natively to M1, it would perform much, much better. It's still doing pretty well here, but you must remember that this game is similar to the Dirt games, where it can easily scale down well on non-gaming hardware. 30 FPS on the first M1 chip is also fine for a racer and is on par with the console version. Number 8 we have Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. It's a massive shame the iconic strategy game Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition never saw a Mac port. Because we must remember that the original game was ported to Power PC Max back in 1999 and to this day I still play LAN battles with my siblings across an iMac G4, iMac G5 and an eMac. Thankfully, the Definitive Edition runs incredibly well on Crossover. In fact, it's playable at 4K resolution on every single M1 chip and supports 120fps on M1 Pro and M1 Max devices. This should not be too surprising as it's by no means a demanding game by today's standards, even the Definitive Edition. The most important thing to note, however, is that the original M1 chip is best played up to 2K resolution to play competitively with others in the multiplayer mode. 4K is only advised for single player. Code Weavers are going to try and add DirectX 12 support to Crossover 23 in 2022. This might mean Age of Empires 4 will work then, as it requires that framework. I'll keep you updated. Number 7 is Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. Halo CE is similar to Age of Empires, as the original game was ported to Power PC Max in the early 2000s. I think I finished the campaign like more than 5 times on my iMac G5 back in the day. It holds a special place for me when I look back at what Mac gaming used to be. Much better than today. I'm therefore so happy it's playable on crossover. It's also one of the few games that fully work in the Halo Master Chief Collection on Steam. 
For example, Halo 2 has game-breaking FPS drops even at low settings, and some other games like Halo Reach currently have no in-game sound, and I can't get multiplayer to work for any of these games still. Across every M1 based Mac, you can comfortably enjoy the enhanced graphics. Just make sure to follow my recommended settings that you see on screen now to get over 30 FPS. Plus 30 FPS is vital for Halo CE to get those uh, headshots. It's also worth noting that if you enable the performance or original graphics, the game will get much better performance, but I prefer enhanced graphics. Number six, we have A Plague Tale Innocence. A Plague Tale Innocence has no business working on M1. You see, on Mac, it's very rare to find a new AAA title with this kind of rich storyline, visual quality, voice acting, and cinematic polish. To be fair, its performance is the worst out of all the games on this list because, you know, on Windows PC, it's a moderately demanding game, whereas on M1 via crossover, it's a very demanding game. I actually don't recommend that you play it on the baseline M1 chipset, as the game doesn't look that great at 720p resolution. You can get by, but I wouldn't advise it. Even the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip can only do 900p or 1080p, which I know some will laugh at, but remember, before you judge, none of these games are running natively. It's a miracle that they are actually working here in the first place. Plus, the game's pacing here is quite slow, from the stealth, combat, storytelling, and so on. So, you can get by with only getting 30 to 60 FPS. Number five is Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Sekiro is probably the most satisfying action game I've ever played. When you master the controls, the combat is smooth and buttery and looks super satisfying. It's super hard though, but that is what you come to expect via From Software. Now, like A Plague Tale Innocence, this one is quite demanding for M1. I think it's passable performance on every M1 chip, just make sure, again, you follow my recommended settings on screen. Still, the M1 Pro and M1 Max is ideal here to get 40 plus FPS. Sekiro revolves heavily around precise movement, so 30 FPS on the baseline M1 chip might be challenging for some, but if you play the game on PS4 or Xbox One, you should be fine. Note, make sure to turn off motion blur on every M1 Mac because it creates game-breaking FPS drops in certain scenes. Number four, we have The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. Skyrim is definitely one of the most requested games to be ported over natively to M1 or Mac in general. It's surprising that it never saw a Mac release as the game is literally on most other platforms out there and The Elder Scrolls Online has a native Mac port. Code Weavers actually added support for this game in Crossover, so it runs pretty well though, if you play at the settings on screen. There is a visual bug on some M1 configs that you can remove by turning off D3, D11. If you have this issue, which I hope you don't, follow my tutorial in the video description on how to get rid of it. This is a big game, and I have come nowhere near close to finishing it on M1. That's kind of not possible, so I can't confirm if it has no game-breaking bugs later on in the game. But based on results from other Mac users and the fact that Cove Weavers somewhat optimized it, here you should be okay. Number three is Dark Souls Remastered. I wanted to include Dark Souls 3, but that game has a game-breaking bug where it freezes when you go into the graphics settings, and it has game-breaking bugs later in the game that make it not fully playable from start to finish. Whereas Dark Souls Remastered is fully playable from start to finish, and honestly, it has the best performance out of all the games on this list. Yes, again, it's a 2018 remaster of a 2009 game, so it's not gonna blow anyone away. I actually started a petition to get from software to port Dark Souls 1 to M1 and Intel Max, 
back in 2021, with Elvarels being the Mac porting house. You know, the people behind great Mac ports from Dark Souls 1 and 2 and Baldur's Gate 3. If you're interested in signing it, check out the link in the description. Dark Souls 1 on crossover supports 1080p and 60fps at max settings on the baseline M1 chip, 2K and 60fps at max settings on M1 Pro, and 4K 60fps at max settings on M1 Max. Again, to hit a consistent 60fps on all configs, make sure motion blur is turned off. If it was native, Alvarez told me they could easily support ProMotion on the new M1 chips. Number two, we have The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The first two Witcher games saw a Mac port, but the third one never saw a Mac version, which is very sad. Still, I can't get my head around the fact that Code Weavers managed to get this game to work on M1 through crossover. It's really an engineering feat, thanks to them now supporting Molten VK on their software. The Witcher 3 is one of the most iconic open world RPGs, or just AAA games ever made. And it has, again, no business working here. It gets similar performance to the PS4 and Xbox One version on the baseline M1 chip, which is outstanding. Whereas it can get 60 FPS gameplay on M1 Pro and M1 Max devices at higher quality settings. Number one, we have Grand Theft Auto 5. It wasn't until late 2021 that Code Weavers added support for GTA 5 on Crossover. It was one of the most requested games for them to get working, and they did it. The main hurdle getting around was logging in with the Rockstar Launcher and making GTA Online somewhat playable. Now, this is gonna be a little bit complex. Pause the video now for the recommended settings for single player on M1. Now, pause the video for the recommended settings for GTA Online on M1. Yes, this is an old game, and many of you will again laugh at the performance, but do I need to remind you again that this isn't a native port and it's all a work in progress? For example, the game does have some graphical artifacts, especially out in Lost County, and GTA Online has significantly worse performance than single player. In fact, I don't really recommend you play it. But those issues aside, single player is playable and it's a great, great campaign. And it's a good thing because this game remains one of the most played video games to date. It's currently in the top 10 Steam charts for current players. Here are three bonus games. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is playable if you play offline. The online functionality doesn't work right now. Fallout 4 has some graphical and performance issues still. Mortal Kombat X has amazing performance. It's just that textures for characters are missing during cinematics and fatalities and so on. What games have you been playing on M1 via crossover? Let me know in the comments in case I make a second video. I might not though, as this video took way, way, way too long to make, as I had to test all these games for weeks across so many M1 Max. I wonder now if it was worth all my effort, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, I hope you find some use here. Crossover can be a buggy software, and many AAA games simply don't work. If they do, they usually require so much configuring of system files to get them up and running, and then it will most likely be playing at very low settings on M1. You will find this with the recent God of War on crossover. Andrew Sai on YouTube does a great job at showing how to set up certain games and get them working well, so check him out in the video description. Crossover or Parallels is your main alternatives to playing Windows PC games on M1, as Bootcamp is still not supported. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name's Stewie and thanks for watching.